Hi there, I'm Dr. Elbert Chung and welcome to your friendly proctologist. Thank you so much for being here. Would you please like and subscribe this video? It greatly helps my mission, which is to bring you useful and helpful information on the internet. I'm also providing video consultations for people that are interested. If you want to learn more, just look in the description box below. And so let's get to today's topic today. And today's topic is one that's been asked many, many times and for good reason, because it freaks people out, okay? So what is that question? The question is, do I have anal stenosis? What is anal stenosis, right? And let me tell you, that is a really, really good question. The information on the internet is really not clear at all. And I'll tell you, many doctors and practitioners, you know, people that have medical degrees do not use this term properly, okay? And it, when the thing is, is what happens, people, the patient, you get wind of that. Somebody tells you you have stenosis. You go look on the internet, you're like, oh! <gasps> I have anal stenosis, oh my God. I mean, when you really look up and you get deep into it, it's an, it's really, let's just, I mean, it's awful, okay? Um, there really is no easy way or euphemism for it. Anal stenosis is awful, okay? So let's fully break it down. Okay, anal, your bottom end, stenosis, stenosis means is a fancy word for narrowing, okay? If you think of um, a funnel, right? You got a funnel, you're changing the oil in your car. There's a funnel that goes, starts on the top, which is where you fill the oil, nice catch pan, and then it funnels down until it gets to a very small hole. And that's how you get the oil into your, your engine without spilling it all over the floor, right? Well, we would say that the funnel has a stenosis at the very bottom because it's wide open at the top if, and as it funnels down, it's getting narrower, narrower, narrower until it gets to that final size. And then we say it's stenosing or it has a stenosis at the bottom. And um, with, a bo with that word stenosis, when it call, well, I mean, excuse me, God, I'm getting fumbling with my words here, but we have different organs that we can also use for stenosis as well. You know, the esophagus can be stenosed um, or narrowed down, but you, we want to talk about the anus, right? So, with the anus narrowing down, how do I know I have stenosis, the true meaning of stenosis? Okay, anal stenosis comes from a disease process, okay? It does not just appear out of nowhere. You don't just get anal stenosis, okay? It's not a virus, it's not a bacteria. This anal stenosis merely describes how narrow down your anus is, okay? But it's gotta come from somewhere. For example, it's got, it can come in from uh, insult to the tissues at your anus, okay? So things like inflammation, and the classic one is Crohn's disease, okay? Crohn's disease is a, well, many people would consider it like an autoimmune disorder, a chronic GI um, inflammatory, hyperinflammatory uh, disorder. And what it does is it can inflame the lining of the anus. If that, inf if that inflammation were severe enough, chronic enough, meaning it was there for a long, long time and was not treated, what happens is this inflammation that has been there for a long time is trying to destroy the normal tissues that you were born with. And so, when the body sees this inflammation and injury, it wants to come and heal it. So it brings the immune system along and says, 
come on body, we need to rebuild this anus. We need to fix this inflammation so that we can get on with our living our lives. We don't want pain anymore and things like that, okay, and bleeding and stuff. But when the immune system comes and heals to something, it also brings in scarring, okay? And you know what scar is? It's like heavy, rubbery, thick stuff. And the other thing too is that it does not stretch as well, okay? So when all that stuff is being laid down, that scar tissue in the anus, and it's been going on for many years. Inflammation comes, more scar comes. Inflammation comes again with another flare, more inflammation comes, okay? Then the, the tissues at the anus and even some of the muscle tissues, because they're right underneath there, become hard because it's full of scar tissue. And typically, the scar tissue creates such a problem where the anus does not stretch anymore. Because what's the normal state? What, what is our anus usually doing at rest? It's closed, okay? We, if our anus was open all the time, we'd be leaking poop everywhere. And so it's closed and that's how the body usually sits and that's how the body will repair itself in that mold. So with people with anal stenosis from Crohn's, they have a hard anus, the lining is hard, and it does not stretch and therefore it literally looks like the size of a pencil hole okay so it, people with that issue have issues with constipation they can't get poop out because it's such a small hole okay i mean they have to really force it out okay people with anastasis have incredible amounts of pain okay and it's a really really severe problem and um, we're not gonna get into other treatments for it because that's out of the scope of this video, but that is anal stenosis, okay? Another example, someone had a hemorrhoidectomy surgery. The surgeon saw a bunch of hemorrhoids everywhere, didn't exactly know exactly how to do a safe hemorrhoid surgery, started cutting up all the hemorrhoids in there and removing too much, okay? What happens at that point is the body, again, it sees that injury and it wants to heal things. So it brings the immune system, says, let's go do it. How does it heal? It brings in scar tissue. But the surgeon didn't leave enough normal skin on the inside of the lining of the anus. He or she took out too much. So what happens is the scar tissue is way more than the normal lining. And then the anus becomes hard because it's mostly scar tissue and it's, the anus then becomes contracted and turns into a pencil hole again, okay? So those are really common issues or common causes of anal stenosis and it's absolutely distressing when a patient has these issues, okay? So when people ask me, do I have anal stenosis? It's because the doctor sees them with a tiny little hole or a tight hole. And so they say, oh gosh, you know, you have anal stenosis, sir or ma'am. And you think, oh my God, do I have, really have that? But I'll tell you, most of the doctors do not know what that means. Okay, how do I know? Because I see those patients that come and see me and their muscles are tightened. With anal stenosis, the lining and the connective tissues in the bottom end are hard and have no flexibility. The reason why you can't put a finger in someone with real anal stenosis or a scope is because the lining is not going to be flexible and in fact, it's gonna crack the inside lining, okay? And for those of you with tight bottom ends, your muscle may make you feel like things are going to crack and rip, but because you're not able to relax, that's why things won't go in there. But I'll tell you one thing, okay? If I took you to surgery and I gave you the anesthesia, anesthesiologist, doctor who puts people to sleep, gave you the medication to go to sleep and knock you out, I can open your anus really big like this. Okay, and I can do that with everyone, all right? 
And so if you don't have a history, a story of like the examples I told you, like some surgery or some chronic inflammation, you know, or some connective tissue disorder, that's like usually those are genetic. I promise you almost 99.99999% you do not have anal stenosis. You just have a very strong anus that is freaked out. The anxiety in your body is high. Your anus wants to protect you and therefore it's not going to let anybody mess with you. Okay? But that is not anal stenosis. That is just nervousness. If you were comfortable, you were prepared, you, were, you had a good conversation about how things were going to go, you're going to be okay and you would relax those muscles. Because believe me, I see this every day in my office, yet I'm able to get a scope into people pretty much 100% of the time. And they think they were told anal stenosis, but they don't have it. And so it's unfortunate that people toss this word around like it's nothing just because they can't open up your bottom end. And, but the bad thing is that it freaks people out because it really is, a, it really is so distressing to read about and to think they have that. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off my soapbox because it just, it, it, um, I mean, a bottom end conditions, it's all about, it, I mean, it affects our emotions so directly and so, and it's with such a high amplitude that, you know, some people just, I, I mean, it's, I'm telling you, people need to really think about what they're saying before they say it. And if they don't know, just to say, I don't know, would be such a great, I think, a great strategy, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, that's why you're here. So I hope this video answers some questions for you. Please comment and like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.